Hello. Boo. Yes, I'm sitting in front of my desk, on the floor, and uh, this is my library behind me. I have one shelf of books there that I am trying to read over the course of this year, but the rest of my books, this is where they live. We've got all the Harry Potters, of course, out of order. Notebooks, horrible histories, anyway, makes me happy. I thought I would just shake up the background today. Um, today I am sitting down to waffle about religion and faith and Christianity. This is unscripted and yes, I'm a bit nervous. Religion has been a focal point for lots of my channel in the past. For those of you who have been following me for the last 11 years, you will know how much Christianity meant to me growing up. Um, you can see in the majority of my videos up to 2011, I am constantly wearing this cross around my neck. This is it, this is the cross. No, I didn't get rid of it. It's been in a box for the last seven years. The thing is, religion and faith, it's so personal, it's so individual, it's not something you really broadcast. At least I feel like that. It's not something I feel I should have to admit, um, or go into depth about. I don't really need to explain my faith to other people because it's purely between us. <laughs> Hope that makes sense. Whereas on the other hand, despite this being a very personal thing, I do want to talk about it to a certain extent because it's been a huge part of my life. There's like two different Rebecca's inside my brain right now trying to get different points across. <laughs> well, why am I bringing this up now? Why am I talking about this? Well, let's give you a bit of a history first. So I was born into a Christian family. My parents were both Christian. Christianity shaped my entire childhood. I was baptized 10 years ago. Um, and then around the age of 17, 18, mental and physical health practically overtook my life and uh, all the lights went out, including my Christianity light. That was about 2010, 2011, around the time I was diagnosed with depression. That period, <laughs> I don't feel I can go into more depth than that, I'm afraid. I just, it will take me to a mental place I do not want to go right now. But just know that 17, 18, it stopped. So anyway, between 2010 and last year, I practically ignored everything to do with faith. I blocked it out. I described it recently as I built walls around myself. Um, the first two, three years of that experience were terrifying. <laughs> and the more time that passed and the higher the walls I built, the better I felt, the more I sort of understood myself. Um, however, and she pauses. Deep breath. In the last year or so, I have been taking down the bricks. This time last year, I found myself stepping foot into my childhood church for the first time in seven years, maybe longer. And it wasn't because I wanted to go back, I was sort of invited. Um, in a way, it's a bit like coincidence or fate, or it was God's plan. My church is located halfway between where I live and my orthodontist, and on that day I was going to the orthodontist and I timed the journey wrong. I was too early. Um, so I decided to pause in the church car park just for 20 minutes, and then I would be on my way. And whilst I was sitting in the car park, in the car, on my phone, engine off, um, somebody inside the church recognised me and asked me in. <laughs> they asked me for a hot chocolate. And of course they said yes, one, because I'm so polite and I was too scared to say no, two, because the church had been rebuilt in the years that I hadn't been there, so I was excited to see the church, and three, because the lady was so nice. <laughs> that lady was either one of my Sunday school teachers or just somebody that I knew when I was in the church as a, as a kid. So I went in, we had a hot chocolate, talked about life, and she invited me to the service on the following Sunday, and of course I said yes. And I went, and... I don't think it went very well. I was angry coming out. But then over the next, I don't know, six to eight months, um, it was like someone turned a light switch on in my brain and I, I've been thinking and I don't know. And then about a month ago, my dad and I decided to go back to church together. 
and I've been going to the two different sessions on a Sunday for the last month. The first thing I really struggled with going back into this situation may sound really stupid. It has nothing to do with religion or God at all. It's about the fact that uh, it had been about seven, eight years since I last set foot in that church. So everybody was eight years older. Everybody had more wrinkles. Lots of the grown-ups and teachers I had as a kid were now much older and lots of them had white hair. They didn't have white hair the last time I saw them. But it gets even weirder. I used to be a sort of leader on a Friday for the church youth groups and those kids are now 15, 16 years old. So for me in my brain, I couldn't quite comprehend how these children had grown in that amount of time. Some of them right now are at college and uh, applying to university and, and my, my brain is just <laughs> The more I'm going back to church, the more I'm engaging with the people that I grew up with and lost contact with and uh, it's weird, I'm learning more about them and lots of them are married. Some have had children. Whilst we're on the topic of marriage, I'm gonna go on a tangent just for a moment. That is one thing that is annoying me, sort of, that there aren't that many people there that are my age um, and those of us that are my age are all married and to each other. They do have lots of children and youth groups, but it goes up to year 13. I think I'm year 18 now, if we're doing school years, and uh, I can't go, and I can't be a leader right now. But as for everybody being married, it is scary. It sounds like I'm going back to church to find a marriage partner, and no, I mean, that would be nice, but that's not why I'm going back. Um, so I feel a bit alone there. I'm not sure whether that's an okay thing to say. I don't know, it's, it's how I feel. As for the church itself, as I said, the church has completely changed since I went at 17. It is one of those churches that keeps growing and growing. They rebuilt it twice whilst I was there, so the fact they knocked down a huge chunk of it and rebuilt it from scratch, wow. My dad, my brother and I went on a tour of the church and, oh, it was so confusing. Completely in awe of the church, but bits of the church that I knew still existed, or rooms had been changed, walls had been knocked down. Um... Oh wow, no, you're kidding me. <laughs> Blimey. Wow. Oh, that's amazing. Wow. This part of the church was quite special to me. This is called the Baker Room. And as you can see, it has a cross window um, on one side. And about three weeks ago, I stood in that spot for the first time in nine years. <laughs> Here are some clips of me in that room in 2008. I think that's the last time I can really remember being in that room. So amongst the religious aspects, the nostalgia has been overwhelming. But let's move on to other things that I am finding difficult and may not be able to verbalize as well as I wish I could. I hope I'm being coherent in this. The fact I have been looking back on all of this has been playing with my brain. That's the only way I can kind of describe it. I've been questioning my past, things about me. I'm just, my brain is sort of imploding. A few videos back, I talked about life post university and graduation and said how I was at the most lost I have ever felt in my life. And I guess you could say, it's just stepped one up on that feeling. I feel so lost. <laughs> this is so hard to explain. Things are just weird, very, very, very weird. It is the weirdest thing when you block out something from your life for so long that you forget everything about it. If you're my age or above, think of a subject that you hated in school and once you left school, you just blocked it out and then suddenly, I don't know, 20 years later, you need to go back to it. That's how I feel. I feel lost. And I'm confused because I have memories and thoughts and they're not always adding up. I've been reading through my Bible and it's like reading a story I've forgotten and as I'm reading I'm remembering things and then I'm getting angry at myself because I've forgotten things. There are so many things that changed in my life when I walked away from religion. Physical things, so for example I used to wear bracelets with fishes on them um, constantly. As I said, my cross and I was given another cross by my granddad that I used to hang on my old light in my old room. I know exactly where all the Christian stuff I own is. It's all wrapped up in bubble wrap in a box in the garage. It's been wrapped up for years. I used to have Christian stuff everywhere. I think I need to clarify. I am a hoarder of sorts and I collect everything in my life. And although I built all those brick walls around me, I kept everything from my childhood, including all my Christian stuff. 
So thank you, Past Rebecca. I've been able to go through all my stuff and find notes, books, this. What is this? Well, this is my Bible bag and I was given this by my parents in 2005 or six. They bought it for me when we were at New Wine or Living Water, one of those big Christian camps, thousands and thousands of people. It's very battered, but it's, uh, it's still functional. There we go, it is a bag. Just gonna take out the service sheets. And this is my Bible inside. I do actually have two of these Bibles, I can't remember why. Okay, maybe I can. <laughs> my goodness, is it really that battered? This is the first time I have looked at the spine of this in about eight years. Wow. I mean, it shows that I used it, I suppose. I feel quite bad, I feel embarrassed. So I have two of these Bibles. The other one is actually on my bed because that's the one I've been reading. That one's a bit neater than this. I've got a feeling I might have bought this one at New Wine, possibly. Um, but I remember adding the stickers. They're some of my favorite verses, chapters, things like that in the Bible. Um, things I've forgotten that I need to look back on. So again, thank you, Pastor Rebecca. I don't know how I've come across in this or whether this is too personal or not. I will see in editing. But yeah, this is where I am. Um, I'm currently lost. I am looking back. I'm trying to reconnect. Not necessarily go straight back in and go, hey, I'm back in. Um, I, 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 don't, I know the world is very complex and lots of us are atheist, agnostic, or have different faith. For some people watching this, this may make them happy. It may make them angry. Um, <laughs> There are some people who will walk away from me flat out for even doing this vlog, I know. It's one of the reasons why even when I was a Christian, I held back in a way because there was so much aggression whenever I mentioned it. But regardless of what everybody else believes, I'm gonna stick with my own brain. This doesn't have to please other people. It's about me, yep. As for the past and the period where I slammed doors and locked myself away in regards to this, one day I will talk about it, but as I said, I can't go there right now. I'm sort of focusing on the present, I suppose. I guess the one thing I need to say about all of this is that it fluctuates and it changes. Um, our relationship with God and Christianity, it's not always concrete. So opinions I had as a teenager that I believed with all my heart, I don't necessarily agree with right now. And things that I am saying right now and the way I'm thinking, this may be very different to how I feel in the future. That is so important to remember, especially if you're watching this in the future. I am recording this at the end of July, 2017. And I'm currently 24. So yeah, I'm sort of date stamping this video. This vlog has been far more emotional and talkative than I expected. It's possibly very long, but I've needed to talk about this and I feel good for talking about this. Thank you for watching, thank you for all your thoughts and prayers. I'm getting lots of messages concerning this at the moment and I know lots of you really care, so thank you. So yeah, that's today's video. I will see you in the next one.